listening to, I say you are listening to, you are absolutely listening to, the George Espinlove Show, coming to you live from the Funny Farm. Now with no further ado, here comes Georgie! Yep, I can tell. I can tell it's Friday night. Holy mackerel, Andy. <laughs> to all of our friends down the street, around the corner, across this great nation and around the world, you're listening to the George Espenlob Show, coming to you live from the Funny Farm in a place called Our World. This is another freaky Friday night at the the farm and tonight we have to start this thing off the total tutor mr neil haley out of pittsburgh pennsylvania who comes and be he joins us once a month and for some reason when neil gets to the funny farm he just lets it all go he gets all cranked up and he just well we just never know that's all i can say we just we just never know ladies and gentlemen Mr. Neil Haley. Neil, welcome to the show. Hey, George. Uh, it's been a little bit longer than a month, and uh, it's been a very, very, very busy December. I think the last time I was on was November, and uh, I'm glad to be back on the funny farm. I think I was going really funny last time, going crazy. Uh, a lot of big things coming up for me in 2013. Yet we always see these different things lay out the plans that we thought on January 1st, and now we're sitting here, you know, January 11th, and they're saying, wow, maybe I didn't make the right plans. (laughs) 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 Or, oh, geez, I'm going in another direction, but it's an exciting direction. But I don't know what I anticipated when I first made decisions uh, right before 2013, if that's the direction I'm going but wouldn't you agree as well? I guess we get these New Year's resolutions. We have these plans and these, I guess, the best laid plans of mice and men. They never really happen. That's true. What what I found out is I have to stay on my toes, and I have to adjust while I'm adjusting. After I adjusted, while I was adjusting, while I was still adjusting. Does that make sense to you? I, I guess it does, George. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 but uh, what I'm going to say is that. You know, this is uh, this is the hardest thing. Is you know, as an entrepreneur, especially when you're kind of going in other entrepreneurial ventures, away a little bit from education, you see that there are so many possibilities. Yet you find your niche, you find what you're really good at, you find what you love, and then you figure out. And sometimes, well, maybe I was going in the wrong direction to begin with. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's it's just it's a situation. But uh, I just wanted to kind of talk to you about, I guess, the, uh, I don't know, I don't want to be this 2013 uh, setup guy in a lot of ways, but the education's going well, the radio show's going well, everything's going well, but yet you see what, what, what makes you truly passionate, and that's the hardest part, I think, in life. It's not always how much money you make, mm-hmm. it's what makes you passionate, and what makes you think is going to make a difference, and also, it's something that will make you some good money, but yet... You know, uh, you could go off the route and make a lot more money, but are you truly going to be happy with your family and everything? And that, that's how I'm feeling today on the Funny Farm. What about, so what's your response? Are you going to be a, the uh, the doc on the couch today? You knew something crazy would happen with me coming, when I come on the radio. Oh, yeah, because you're, you're one of our own. But we never know what's going to happen when you step on the grounds. But exactly, exactly, and, and we, we we went through the pet peeves of radio show hosting, uh, one hundred and one, and what we've dealt with. Uh, somebody hand, he handed me my pink slip today, saying they didn't want to barter anymore, which was probably one of the stupidest things ever done in the history of life. Because the station, I, I have more celebrities on than, than blog talk radio would ever wish upon. Uh, gold medalists, uh, 
big, big time celebrities were negotiations with some tremendous large people that if a station would jump on it and say, you know what, we need to feature you, and there are a lot of stations that want to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they would say, holy cow, there's really money to be made in all the work I'm putting in. I won't make any, but they will. But they have to understand, they have to leave their egos at the door. So there's so many things that I've learned in a year and a half as an entrepreneur. And I guess our, our segment tonight, I didn't think it would be this, was, is Neil Vence? No. I would say, <laughs> That's what we're here for. I guess that's, that, that's the thing. Uh, what happened to education? But to educate people about entrepreneurship and also about the fact of the matter of <laughs> what makes a successful entrepreneur what truly brings you and drives you each and every day, and what 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 can how can you get kind of uh, wasted time sent on specific things? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I want I want to know your facts. You you were a business owner for a lot of years, right? So, uh, what, what 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 you see in that process as well? It's it's a, it's an interesting process, especially with decision making. I read years and years and years ago. And I don't even know who it was or where it was. But the gist of it was something like this. Find out, just like you said, find out something that you love, something that will drive you, something that has has you gripped so tight, you're so passionate about, and go with it. And the money will come later. Now... I learned that a long time ago. I didn't always apply it, but every now and then it would bounce back, uh, come out of the recesses of my mind, and I'd think, yep, that's right. Stick with what you love. Stick with the passion, like you said. Uh, your, your passion will overrun everything else, even when people look at you like you have two heads. But if you know the passion is there and it's driving you, let them look. Because somewhere around the corner or down the road, something's going to happen that it's all going to come together. And if we can keep that perspective, I I think we live in such a fast-moving world that we don't want to take the time to let things develop. We want to fall right into the groove, into the niche, and just roll down the rain spout and sing a happy song. But it doesn't always work like that. But if we can find our passion and we're patient, things will develop if we let them develop. Don't you agree? Well, I agree. And I think I know my passion I know, but I'm still very confused. I mean, money's coming, but yet I see the passion. I, I, my goal is to educate people from birth all the way up to all adulthood in all areas of life. That's a pretty passionate uh, uh, mission statement that I try to bring every day to the table but every time I learn something and I put it into place, it is successful. My radio show, syndicated to 90-plus stations, now we're looking at, well, how can I get major celebrities? How can I get more terrestrial radio stations? Different things like that. I started a social media frenzy 90 days ago, and my clout ranking is 75, and I'm trying to go after the Holy Father now. Mm-hmm. That's a shout-out to the to a person that will definitely listen to this interview, one of my good friends, uh, uh, Father Marty, and Father Marty also is War Tracks on uh, on Twitter. Uh, so he, uh, he he really that that's what makes me passionate is uh, Twitter and Facebook and, and social media, and to teach others to be successful at that. That's something that drives me. There are certain things that don't drive me, and that but again, you get forced into those things. And you have to say to yourself, well, am I going to take that shot and do it? Yeah, I'm going to take that shot because you never know. You might like it. Because the problem in this economy is a successful radio idea and radio show that draws a lot of listeners in an economy that's strong would lead to lots of sponsorship, lots of opportunities, and uh, the tutoring company would just explode. Mm -hmm. Well, it's growing when most businesses are losing money, so I'm happy where I'm at. But yet, I'm, 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 I'm constantly trying to reinvent myself. And I think that's the hardest struggle, uh, to look at that in reinvention. I know with your business, you continue to stay pretty much the same course. 
Well, the course has changed in so many ways. And uh, the, the people that I'm dealing with in Hollywood, so the conversations that I'm having with major celebrities that are tweeting me out, it's, it's, it's so difficult to decide where to go. Because you've got to look at your family. You can't be traveling 300 days a year with four children. Right. At one point, you, and, and the thing is, like, that's why a goal of mine to have my own reality television show is a truly why I'm doing a lot of this, because if I could do one locally in my house that goes to the house and then be the cake boss of tutoring, that's why I'm trying to build all this media up. That's one of the goals, but the books, the different things, it's all about branding myself, but yet other opportunities arise as an entrepreneur. And I'm taking those opportunities, and it's working out financially, but yet I don't know if that's going to be exactly what makes me passionate. In, in Georgia, and I know people will listen to the show, and they'll have no idea, but the roads always in, in life, you choose a, a path and you go with it, and God will allow you to take that path, and you're going to learn from those experiences and grow in wisdom. And I felt I've grown as an entrepreneur wisdom-wise in the past year and a half. But yet, I, don't, I still think I remember one guy came to me and told me this. A year, it, was, it was about a year ago. Uh, he came on my show. He's a life coach for, for high school students. And he said, Neil, you have a great brand. Keep going after it. And I allowed other things to pull me apart. Mm-hmm. Financially, to take care of my family, for one. It's not like I could go get a big loan to live on for a couple of years to just show <laughs> that, hey, I can build this to the greatest extent. So I've had to take other jobs. I've learned through them, and it's great. But that's the hardest thing, George. When you're an entrepreneur, you really have to kind of take things you don't like, go with them, learn from them, and move on. Isn't that true? Yeah, have 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 you ever, and I'm sure you have. Have you ever realized that? How can I put it? When when you think you found your course, and and you set your eye on the tree across the field, and you're gonna go straight for it. Have you ever noticed that when you made up your mind and started to put every bit of strength into it that you have? another two or three opportunities approach. Have you ever noticed sure. that? Absolutely, they do. They definitely do approach. And then you grab the easy one, or not the easy one, but the one that will be the safest choice right now. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying it's bad to take a safe choice. It's be mature. But you got to make sure that those choices are leading to the direction you want to go someday. Right. you got to patience. Look at uh, Noah, how many years he waited till finally he got off the ark, mm-hmm. or he built the ark, and then look at look at Moses, look at all these different people. They, they, they had the patience to get to where they want. So I'm not venting away, but I'm, I'm trying to lift, explain to my audience as an entrepreneur, you can go in so many directions. But one thing I don't want in my life is it to drive me to the point where well, that's all I think about. Mm-hmm. And that's definitely not it. I do everything for the glory of God. I try to sanctify my work and everything I do to my very best. Even if it's something, hey, you know what, but I'm going to prioritize, I'm going to make sure when I do it, I do it to the best extent. Look at what I've done social media-wise, and I took uh, one of my clients to a level beyond belief in social media and have taught others to do it in a very short period of time, just learning from it. But I was able to take that skill and go with it. So if I would say I wake up today, what do I want? I want to do what I said my mission statement is. Educate. It's got to be educate. I wouldn't say I am a salesman as much as a teacher. But a teacher, a teacher almost has to be a salesman, don't he? <clears throat> to, to, a to salesman sell. in a certain in a certain aspect, but not a the the, the quintessential salesman. Right, right. Because with, with with any project or any product that you're you're introducing to someone, regardless of what that is, the number one thing is 
is people listen or people buy or people take because of who it is. They buy you first. And, 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 and because they buy you first, then whatever you're teaching, whatever you're selling, whatever you're putting together, whatever it is, they'll accept it and they'll want it because first, first they bought you. They checked you out. They trust you. They're comfortable with you. You made an impression on them. And then whatever else you do, they'll follow. Get me? Yeah, and, and I agree with you. And if, but if you don't have it 110% in you, uh, the, the the thought process is if you can get tons of people involved and interested in something, but you're not truly passionate about it, it's not going to last forever. That's right. And that's that, and that and that's 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 the dilemma we all go through. I tell you right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out to my the listening audience out here. Doesn't matter how many stations I'm syndicated on. I guarantee I'll have the number one education talk show, which I probably do, but I will be known as the number one education talk show in the world, worldwide. People will know who I am. I will be on all the major deals in the next five years. The reason I say that is because I'm doing it in so many different avenues. I'm creating a PBS slash K through birth through college slash Educate people in every area slash to learn about life, education of life. And that's what the Total Education Network's all about. And I think that's what our last conversation brings. But even though I don't make a dime, but it's helped me make money, I absolutely, truly believe most of my shows have a tremendous market. Others are just things I just truly love and I really learn from and network through. That leads to my seven and a half hours to eight hours of programming a week. Eight shows produced a week. That's a ton. George, you do five. Mm -hmm. But the, the, I have about 21 to 22 guests a week. Plus, uh, plus uh, the, the, the editing process to put them together, take out commercials in some of them, do all these different things, and then send it to all the stations. That's the physical craziness. But I love doing it. It's something. But... I love tutoring. And someone tried to say, oh, you don't want to tutor me. No, please don't talk me out of tutoring. I love tutoring. I love being an educational advocate. I love uh, teaching people certain skills. But I, the honest truth, and I'm telling you this in front of you and how much of the audience that listens to this show, I don't consider myself a salesman. That's the difference, but I teach life. I find services that I can provide that aren't sales services. They are services to help others. Mm -hmm. And that's what leads me and drives me. And if it continues to drive this train, I'm going to do it. And at one point, I will move maneuver over. So what is your thought? I mean, I, you've ever been in a position like I'm in right now. I know you see it from just Facebook and Twitter how I'm bouncing back and forth with a lot of different ventures right now. Yeah, I, I, I've been there, done that. Uh, there, there, come, there comes a part in, in everyone's life, and I, and I say everyone, but I can only speak for myself, where we have to make up our mind and we have to sit down here, here here's here's the problem with with most things and people nowadays there is so much noise around us this person saying this this group saying this those over there are coming at us with this and they're just so much so much so much so much that we become overwhelmed have, have you ever sit down of course <laughs> you you're still young yet, but have you ever sit down and you're doing something or you're going to do something and just like that, you forgot what it was? Has that ever happened to you? Not yet. I have a pretty much a photographic memory, George, and I'm, I'm, I'm 40. To, uh, I've turned 40 January 7th, but uh, no, it has not happened to me. I have one of the gifts that I can put everything in my head, but I do write down a ton of things, tons of things. I have lists everywhere. I have lists on my phone. I have lists on my on, on paper. 
and it really drives my life as a scheduled life completely. I had to continue to do what I did in the classroom, and I, and I was bouncing back and forth different things. The schedule time with me is a very, very difficult thing now. I have probably only a few hours of not downtime with how many clients I have during the afternoons to in the mornings doing a lot of other uh, duties and, and, and things from social media, branding to calls to different things. But no, I don't. So I'm wondering, I'm trying to figure out your life, and you own a construction company, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that what you own? Mm -hmm. Were you doing any other business ventures throughout that time? Was I doing what? Any other business ventures while you were owning a construction company? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had an insurance agency, and, and uh, then we were into some uh, uh, other side stuff where we was putting things together. So, yeah, we had, we had two or three things going on at the same time, but they all intertwined where they complemented one another. So... If this tentacle flowed off of this branch over here, it looped back around and connected to that branch. And there's something to come off of that. But everything was connected. I mean, it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like we were we were building over here, and then uh, over here we were making paper hats. Whatever we was doing complemented the other thing that we was doing that complemented the other thing that we was doing. So they all tied together. And we started with one thing, but we continued building other things. But in the end, although they were three different things, they all came together and complemented the one thing. Does that make any sense? Oh, it, it definitely does, and it seems like the kind of same things I'm doing. Here's a question I'm going to ask you, George. What do you think kept you from financial freedom? That your entrepreneurship led to a tremendous thing. Was it the economy that hurt you to get to that point, or was it simply things got in the way? Toward the end, it was, it was strictly the economy. Because we we were in the industry that when when it came crumbling down, uh, it didn't creak and crack, and we we didn't see no stress lines coming. That puppy just fell down on top of everyone in the construction industry. And when it came down, it came down fast. It came down hard, and it was like you were sucker punched and you were out of it for a while and you had to shake yourself to get back up. It didn't come gradually. We knew something was coming somewhere down the road. But when it came, it was just like a, a sudden tornado that fell from the sky. And big companies, small companies, in between companies, uh, everything had a domino effect appliance makers and, and all the other things so it struck and it struck hard it struck fast and it took a lot of us down to where uh if we didn't have a cushion stashed away somewhere we were really sucking air and, and you didn't have you didn't have the what would you say what would you have done differently after looking back at that what what i've done is I would have set more aside than I did. Uh -huh. But outside of that, I'm not so sure that we could have done anything. Now, if, if you didn't have a cushion to fall back on, uh, you were one hurting individual, and you were sucking air big time. But if you had something to fall back on to where you could gather yourself when you finally came to and collect yourself, get yourself together, then you're going to be all right. So other than uh, putting more to the side than we did, I don't think there was anything else we, we could have done because whatever we was doing, we, we were successful at it. <clears throat> so uh, we didn't have a problem with that. It was just the way that the cards fell and it all come crumbling down on everyone. If, that. If, if, if the economy didn't go bad, would you have built it up to a point where your ultimate goal was? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But we also knew, you know, coming coming from uh, way back when, we also knew that this this thing that we was going through uh, in in the construction industry was unlike anything that any generation has ever seen, and we had enough sense to understand that this thing couldn't fly too long. That someday somebody's going to poke a hole in the bubble. And it was going to crash and down. I'll, I'll give you an example. As far as I know, one and one is still two. And I would stand in developments, <coughs> excuse me, and I would look at all the houses that was being built. And I would see young people, particularly, in their 20s, maybe with one toddler, two toddlers. But I would watch them. And we were building massive houses homes for these kids in their 20s and early 30s and when they would move in when they go to closing they'd move in they'd move their camper in they'd move their boat in they'd move their two suvs in i mean that that they'd, they'd, they'd move the whole shooting match in and i'd stand there and think one and one is two i know that these people aren't rocket scientists they work ordinary jobs. Some of them works two and three jobs. But still, one and one is two. And I would stand there and I'd figure utilities, insurance, food, blah, 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 blah. And I knew, and a lot of the other fellows knew, that you just couldn't keep it going. So it would eventually fall down. And that's exactly what happened. So the mortgage business hurt your business. Oh, yeah, yeah. The mortgage business, <clears throat> uh, the banks, when they quit loaning, uh, you know, build additions and, and whatnots and doodads and this and that and the other things, uh, when the money just, when it come crashing down, people were looking for places to live that yesterday they had a big place to live. Today... They were looking for some place to live. And, wow. and so when that happened, it was a domino effect. It affected all of us, builders, uh, uh, anybody that had anything to do with putting it together. It affected everyone. So that, that's what happened. It just moved too fast. One lady told me, she was probably 70 years old. She was a retired English teacher. She says, George, this is what's wrong today. And this was probably a year or two years before everything crashed. She said, most of these kids today start out with what we end up with. And I pondered that, and it made sense. Where it took us a lifetime to accumulate a house and this and that and those and these all of a sudden it was like you was born with this stuff and you and you had it and I'll give you one more example one fella who was in his 20s came to me after everything come crashing down and he said mr. George has this ever happened before because you see he he was only 20 some years old so he grew up as the good times was getting better. And so he never knew what it was to really scrape and scrounge and, you know, stretch a buck here and there and all the other things. And I looked at him and I said, yep, maybe not as fast, maybe not quite as severe, but these things happen like cycles. They happen. He said, well, it always wasn't good then. I said, no. It always wasn't good, but that was the philosophy in our culture. Let the good times roll, and we're going to be like this forever. Exactly. Well, George, uh, great to learn about you more and learn about what the mortgage and all that stuff, and I think it frustrates you with seeing the economy now and what the current administration is trying to do, and that frustrates you even more about uh, why, 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 you'll ask that a thousand times. But, uh, 
I really appreciate you letting me on the show to vent in a little bit. I just think I'll ultimately, I know where I'm going. I know I'm in the right direction, but I've decided never to, even though I have a new projects taking on, I, t- I keep the other stuff going because I know that's my bread and butter. And I know someday I am going to be a superstar. And I'm just telling you this, and I'm not, not going to listen to anybody tell me differently. I had my shot in wrestling. I was just away from it. I had to be on steroids, first of all. And second of all, I had to, when I was in God, God is my witness. I was in the ring. If, you know, I sent you the, the uh, video. And if anyone out there has it, when I wrestled Crush and Savio Vega, and I was in one of the best shapes of my life, I looked bigger than Crush and bigger than Savio Vega, looked like a giant in that ring, looked really in good shape, looked great, best shape of my life. I had a great match. I didn't get picked up. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was God's reasoning. But I had a lot of problems around that that didn't lead me to being a superstar professional wrestler. I had the right connections, everything. I just did not get it. Now I get it. I know how to brand myself. Lots of people don't know how to brand themselves. And I know for a fact I will be a superstar someday. And that's going to guarantee it, and it's going to help a lot of people, and it's going to be a lot of situations, because I'm an entertainer and and an educator, and I'm going to educate people from birth all the way up to adulthood in all areas of life, and I'm going to do it, because no one's going to tell me no to for an answer. I interview all these great, brilliant people every day that are successful, and they have that mindset, and I will continue, and no one's going to stop me. Again, everyone needs to go to TotalTutor.net. For more information, listen to the Education Network seven and a half hours a day. You can listen to the player at George's website as well. You can listen to my show. Go either place. It doesn't matter as long as you're listening. Uh, awesome guests coming up very, very soon. Uh, great celebrities, great education talk. And I see you have a superintendent on in a couple of days. Good luck in that interview. Mm-hmm. And I know you'll ask the right questions, man. And uh, I look forward to our next monthly segment. I have no idea what we'll talk about. You got to label this one, I guess, wi- wisdom. You showed your wisdom and explained to me what it means in life, and I kind of needed validation. So you sat down in the funny farm, and you were my therapist, and the pay you got was nothing because you were being a counselor. And thank you again, George, for listening to me, and look forward to being on next month. So take care, guys. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Love you, man. I love you too, George. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. That's always fun when Neil comes. (coughs) Excuse me. Because that's true. We never know what we're going to talk about. We talk about most any, many things, but he's a great guy. Go to TotalTutor.net, TotalTutor.net, and you can read all about it. Last night, last night was a tremendous show with Rick Baker, who his new book will be out February 4th. It's called No Goodbyes. And it talks about the mysterious disappearance of the McStay family. A whole family just up and disappeared. February 4th in 2010. It'll be three-year anniversary on February 4th. I put the picture up on Facebook, several different places. If you see that family, contact the authorities. No one just happens to know what happened there's theories pick up rick's book no goodbyes no goodbyes it'll be out the very first part of february on amazon barnes and noble go to uh go to uh rickbakershow.com rickbakershow.com and there you can bounce over to his blog where he keeps things updated you can uh get order the book there so on and so forth but it is an intriguing intriguing i mean so interesting development that's continuing on and on and on and on did you did you see the news today <coughs> excuse me uh what was it, the little boy that was abducted in 1994 they found him alive and well so miracles still happen and we're so glad 
I'll be right back in just 30 seconds from now. So hang in there. We got a lot more. Such is that. You're listening to the George Espinlob Show, coming to you live from the Funny Farm in a place called Our World. Drop us an email, georgece at comcast.net, georgece at comcast.net. In just a few minutes from now, our other guest will be phoning in to the Funny Farm radio studio, and... uh, I, I asked this man to come back to the show tonight so that I can uh, reintroduce him to you that have listened to him and introduce you to those who have never listened to him. And in just a few moments, he will be calling in and uh, we'll be going over some things. Monday night, Monday night, and this is for everyone regardless of where you're at in this great big world, we will have on Mr. John Ewald, who is the superintendent of the Laurel School District here in Laurel, Delaware. What he will talk about, what we will talk about, is relevant for every parent, grandparent, administrator, teacher, anyone who has children in school whether it's here in Delaware or across the nation or around the world. He will be with us on Monday night. For you that are in the Laurel School District, listen to me, and we've we've got it up on Facebook, and we'll, we'll reiterate it here again over the weekend. If you have any questions during the show on Monday night, come into the chat room. It's not hard. It's not hard. Just sign in, come into the chat room. If you have any questions at all, just type your question in there. I'll relay it to Mr. Ewald, and and he can answer it. We are also uh, trying to put another line here that if you have a question, you can call in. But don't take that to the bank. We'll, We'll work on that. 
and uh, we might or we might not be able to do that. We would like to do that. But we'll find some way that you can ask your questions. So tune in on Monday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, right here on the Spreaker Network. Go to Facebook. Look me up. Look up the George Espinlob Show page, uh, and you can read all about it. There are some tremendous things that's taking place here on the George Espinlob Show. Uh, this has been a tremendous week. We've been able to come back on the air after being off for two weeks, and we are just excited with what's taking place. We haven't played this in a long, long time, and we had a lot of fun with it. And Charlie dug it out this morning and said he wanted to play it tonight. So, Charlie, while we're waiting for our guests to call, Hit that button. Big Blue Sky. Remember that? Big Blue Sky. If you didn't, it's a lot of fun. Sing it, Charlie. Big blue sky. There's a big blue sky. Sing it, Charlie. That a boy. Come on, all you loons out there. In the living room, kitchen, wherever you're at. Come on. It's a happy song. And besides, it's Friday night. Charlie, I think you're part Irish, because that looks like you're doing an Irish jig over there. Yeah. the raisin bump. <laughs> We're doing the raisin bump. Oh. 
<laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, it's fr Friday night here at the Funny Farm. In fact, it's another Freaky Friday night at the Funny Farm. Listen, our guest has just called in, and I want to introduce him to you. For you that have uh, been here before or listened to C.P. Kelly before, uh, I want to reintroduce him to you. For you that have never heard him, I want to introduce him. Uh, so I asked him to come back. C.P., I'm glad you could make it tonight. Well, thank you, sir, for having me back. You know, I, I had Jason on Monday night, and, yes. and we, had, uh, we had such a good time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, we we mentioned during Jason's appearance here uh, about the Kickstarter fund that we want to uh, raise the money to get you back into the studio. Yes, sir. And then on Tuesday, uh, we went to the Kickstarter fund thingy, and uh, we kickstarted it. We got it started. So... Uh, I wanted to I wanted to get you to come back for a little while tonight to reintroduce you to the folks that heard you on December seventeenth when you was here, and to introduce you to those folks that didn't hear you on okay. December seventeenth. All right, great. Well, first off, let me start off by saying thank you for getting this project off the ground. I mean, any bit and every little bit helps right now. This is a rather expensive industry to be involved in. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my name is C.P. Kelly. I'm 45 years old. I live in Largo, Florida, which is just west of Tampa. October 2010, I was diagnosed with PML, which is uh, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. I was 24 to 48 hours away from death. When I was released from the hospital, I had to learn to walk, talk, bathe, feed myself, just basic daily duties that most people do. And a little over two years later, I'm launching a country singing career. I've signed with Pavement Records, which is under the Sony Music Group. And I have my first single for sale on my website and trying to raise money to get a CD to go behind it. We want to, we, we want to help you just as much as we can, CP. That's why I wanted you to come back tonight. And, George, I certainly appreciate that, sir. I really do. If our listeners will go to C.P. Kelly, that's K-E-L-L-E-Y, cpkelly.com. And scroll down there a little piece, and you, you will see a little section that talks about the fundraiser. Click on that. It'll bump you over to the next page, and there is a long link there. Click on that, and it will take you right to the Kickstarter fund page. And there you will see C.P. Kelly, Absolute Redemption Full-Length CD. Now, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. We need... At least eight hundred dollars to get CP back into that studio, so he can fulfill his dream and complete this full-length CD. Anything above and beyond, well, that's just wonderful. But we need at least eight hundred dollars. This is how the Kickstarter fund works. We have twenty-two more days to go in order to raise at least $800, 22 more days. Right now, we have $25 in the bucket. That means we need $775 at least. You can give a minimum of $1, $1. You can give a minimum of $1. You can give more if you so choose. What I'm saying is, if a whole bunch of us do a little bit each, our bucket will become full and overflowing, and we can put CP in that recording studio where he can fulfill his dream and complete this CD. Now, my listeners know, if you're a first-time listener, if you've been listening for quite a while, 
you know that I never walk out on a limb. I only do those things that I sincerely believe in. I believe in this. I believe in this. This man was given a second chance. Let's put it that way. God spared him for a reason. Let's help him fulfill his dream. So go to cpkelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y dot com. Click on the links there. It'll take you to the Kickstarter fund page. And there you can see. This is how it works. If we don't raise the $800 in 22 more days, CP gets absolutely nothing. So you see, it's either all or nothing. No money. No money will be deducted from anyone's credit card or whichever way you choose to donate unless we reach that $800 goal. Let's take CP over the top so he can fulfill his dream. So how you been feeling, CP? George, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to head to our local love. Uh, VFW post this evening that my dad's a member of for uh, their regular Friday night karaoke night. So, And everybody always looks forward to seeing me show up, especially now that I've answered, uh, told everybody about the Sony contract. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's coming up to me, are you getting big head yet? And I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> keeping myself grounded. Nothing is ever set in stone. That's right. You know, it's I'm it's here. I'm here now. I'm full of energy. I'm full of life. I've slowed down an awful lot and have spent a lot of time looking in at myself and things that I needed to change about me. And I'm working on those and I'm becoming a better, stronger person because of it. But health wise, no complaints whatsoever. I got creaks and groans, but I'm getting older, so that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's no way around that one, my friend. No, sir, there is not. Even living in the state that supposedly has the fountain of youth, I ain't found it yet. But no. if I do, I'm not going to tell anybody about it. I'm just going to use it for myself. And <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Or I may bottle it, sell it for $2 a bottle. Who knows? Yeah, you know, whatever. Keep it cheap. Oh, absolutely. In this economy? So are are you uh, pretty much of a regular over there at the VFW? Yes, sir, I am. Yes, sir, I am. Uh, Molly, the KJ, I give her full credit for allowing me to get up on stage let my personality show come out. Um, she has a wireless mic system, so I'm able to grab the mic, go out, work the crowd, get them worked up into a frenzy and involved. And she has been so supportive. It's amazing. Uh, that's wonderful. Absolutely amazing. And, and the Post is a really good place to go as well. Because um, I enjoy being around the veterans. I enjoy listening to their stories. Uh, there was one gentleman, they've now put him in a rehabilitation center, but he served on horseback mm. in Burma during World War II. Mm-hmm. And we got a photograph of him. We had it, uh, we took it to FedEx Kinko's and had it worked on to make the details a little sharper and everything and gave it back to him to see if he could find himself on there, and he couldn't find himself, so... Mm. But, you know, just hearing those stories, and my dad is a veteran as well. And it's good for him to get out and be around other vets. That's right. Is is your uh, is your father a veteran of, of uh, World War II, Korea? Vietnam. Vietnam. 67. I want you to do me a favor, CP. When you see okay. When you see your dad. Yes, sir. Just tell him Espenlob said, welcome home. He'll know exactly uh, what you're saying. I certainly will, sir, because I know how they were treated when they came home, and he went through that. And that that was a shame. Yeah, we you know we wasn't uh, we we wasn't welcomed when we came home. So no, sir. so we decided to welcome ourselves. So that's Absolutely. what we tell each other: welcome home. Absolutely, you know, and 
it just you got to remember soldiers go where they're told they do what they're told to do that's right that's right you know so don't get mad at them get mad at the leaders who send them there yes yes so you know but i i have just tons of respect for my dad that he came home and wasn't suffering from any of the conditions that a lot of vets do suffer from from Vietnam. Mm-hmm. You know, being a being a gun operator on a uh, door gunner on a Huey gunship. Yes. You know, it, it's absolutely amazing. He made it back, and a lot of his classmates didn't. He was from a small town in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. You know, and it took him years before he would even talk about it. Yes. And, of course, first time he saw Platoon, he looked at me and he said, good movie, but he didn't get it anywhere near right. Right. I was like, like, okay, you don't have to tell me. But, you know, he's proud of the job he did, and I'm proud of him as well. I love my dad to death. As a matter of fact, uh, just the other day was his 68th birthday. Mm. So, you know, got to respect the vets. I'm so glad that you're feeling good. We are going to do everything we can, CP, for the next 22 days. I've got some uh, phone calls I'm going to make. I've got some other things that we're going to present to people. And hopefully, hopefully, we can reach this $800 magic number and go beyond so that you can go in there and finish that CD, buddy. George, I tell you what, you don't know how happy I am that you called back and how you got this out to the audience this evening. I mean, I'm sorry, I listened to it. It brought tears to my eyes, and I wanted to donate. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I may go ahead and donate and just say, hey, the stuff that comes with a certain amount of donation, just keep it. I don't need it because it's me anyway. You right. Know, and that, you know. I hear myself enough singing around the house during the day, so. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I listened to that. My eyes started tearing up, and I was like, "Oh, oh God, this is gonna happen!" <laughs> <laughs> because when I lost the ability to play piano, and I realized that I still had my voice, and I started using it, and people started saying. Why is he singing karaoke? He needs to be in Nashville. Why is he here doing He needs to be in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I have a cousin who lives back in Arkansas. Uh, He uh, told his mom one day after hearing my demo CD, he said, he don't need Nashville. Nashville needs him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, rock on, brother. You know, Mm -hmm. get the word out to him. Let him know. So. But, George, you what you're doing, I mean, this this is phenomenal. I don't know what I've done in my life to deserve this, but I'm thankful and I'm very, very blessed that I have spoken with you and that you're getting behind this as hard as you are. Well, we're going to do the best we can, CP, because we, right. we have found out that you are one fine individual, and we're rooting uh, for George, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. You're one fine individual yourself. Yeah, well, uh, my wife would probably tell you, uh, 45 years, she'd probably have something different to say. But uh, I'll, I'll take your, <laughs> I'll take your compliment. Yeah, but, <laughs> hey, George, I'm from Arkansas. You never listen to family, all right? That's right. That's that's right. <laughs> You're absolutely right, CP. Listen, you know that little guppy fish they caught out on the lake. It turned into an 18 foot long catfish by the time they got home. You that's know, right. You never listen to the stories. That's right. So, well, I certainly hope we get to meet face-to-face someday. I would definitely like to shake your hand. So do I, CP. Listen, All I'll, right, sir. I'll let you go. Go All sing right. Go sing tonight and knock them dead. I'm going to, sir. You better believe it. I always do. All right, buddy. I'll stay in touch with you. All right, George. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right. Have a great evening. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was C.P. Kelly. C.P. Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y dot com. And there you can click the links that will take you to the Kickstarter fund. And there you can become involved, even if it's a dollar, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 
And I have never done this on our radio show before. But uh, CP is fighting these battles, and he's determined to fulfill his dream. And so I'm going to do everything I can to help him. $800. Remember, 22 more days to raise at least $800. We either get the $800 or more, or we get nothing. And no money will be taken out of anyone's account, whichever way you choose to pay, until the 22 days are up and we see if we gained at least $800. So jump in there and help him. I sure will appreciate it. And I know he will, too. I'll be back right after this. Charlie's over there snapping his fingers at me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, jumping up and down, trying to tell me something. Uh, and I, and I'm, <laughs> I, I'm, try, I'm trying to grab the mic. And pull the boom over here. And, and Charlie wants me to look there. Oh, it sometimes gets to be a, a mess around. You, you just never know what's going to happen around here. <laughs> Oh boy, here comes dude. I sure hope that fellow gets that thing taken care of because, man, <coughs> no, I sound just about as bad as he does. My goodness gracious. Hey, what would you do today, being Friday? Every, everybody kind of like chills out on Fridays, right? Uh, there's more of kind of like a, uh, a more happy-go-lucky spirit moving about and... Uh, uh, everybody's kind of laid back and and just anticipating the weekend and so on and so forth. Uh, what you what you do today? Come on into the chat room and join me. It's not hard to get in there. All you gotta do is open the door and walk in. Come in, join me, chat with me. Tell me what you're doing, what you did today, what you're gonna do tomorrow, or just walk in and say hello. That'll be sufficient if that's all you want to do. We have had a tremendous week after being off two weeks. We are so delighted that night after night we can come on the air and we can chat with some of the most incredible people on planet Earth. I'm still vibrating from last night. I, I, I really am. That, uh, that mystery of the McStay family... It's just went down deep inside of me, and I've been thinking about it all day long. It is quite a mystery, but thanks, thanks to Mr. Rick Baker. His book will be out February 4th, and in it, he covers a lot of territory that no one actually knows about, so get that book. No Goodbyes, that's the title of it. The Mysterious Disappearance of the McStay Family. Completely. A whole family. A family of four. Mom, dad, and two little boys. Poof. Gone. Right out of the house. In fact, she left her prescription sunglasses on the counter, and there was fresh eggs on the counter. No forced entry. No sign of a struggle. Just poof. They found their automobile several miles away. Poof. No people. It's amazing. But after reading the news today and finding out that that little boy that was abducted, what, 1994, was found, that gives us hope. Maybe we'll find these other two little guys because that's, I think, who's, uh, who most people are concerned about. This thing has went around the world. It'll be three years, three years. Can you imagine that? Three years in, uh, on February 4th. My goodness. 
I'm trying to do two things at once and talk to you at the same time. And if I sound like I'm a little twisted, it's because I'm a little twisted. Uh, I'm trying to stretch my finger way over here and way over there to type, to type this thing in. How about if I just just uh, push this boom to the side, man? Just just give me a second here. Uh, let, let me get back to where I was. If I sound like a babbling idiot, it's because I'm a babbling idiot tonight. Uh, besides, it's another freaky night at the farm. Give me one second here. One second. Okay. Now. Hold on. Hold on. Work with me now. Uh-huh. 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 Then there's this. This, this, and that's wrong too. <laughs> give me one minute. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. Give me, give me one minute. I'll, excuse me. I'll, I'll get this thing. I will. Uh, one of these. Uh huh. One of them, one of them, one of them, one of them. I, I think I got it now, folks. I, I, I think I got it. Oh, hold on a minute. Whoa. How about that? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Stick, stick with me. I'm, 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 I'm still here, right? You, okay? All right. Uh, let me take this here. Uh, Y'all see me, right? Can't you see me? All right. Uh, Charlie's trying to help me. Yeah, uh-huh. I'll bet you think we're a bunch of screwballs around here, don't you? Well, if you do, you're absolutely right. Now, let me set this over here. Thank you, Charlie. All right. Then, we want one of these over here. Bet you think I'm baking a cake, huh? Well, I'm not. Now, let me look here. Uh huh. All right. Right there, Charlie? Whoa, you made everything crack. Okay. All right. Well, thanks thanks for hanging in there with me. Can you see me? I, I, uh huh. Yeah. Wave at me. Come on. I, I dare you. Just, just, just wave at me. Yeah. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I still got this, uh, this, this cold, this thing, whatever it is. You know, this flu thing's getting to be uh, like an epidemic. All right, let let me make some room here. Y'all be turning me off here in a second if I don't get something done. All right. Uh, what, Charlie? Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, Charlie. Okay. All right. Okay. Charlie thinks he's got everything set up now. Right? Okay. Okay, here. here. Yeah. Man, this is the goofiest show we've ever, ever done. Just push the button, Charlie. Push the button before people turn us off. All right.
Little Red Telephone by Art Linton. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Wasn't that cold? Little Red Telephone. Well, we found what we were looking for. Uh, and I, and I want to thank C.P. Kelly for taking the time to come back on tonight for a few moments to be with us. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to raise the $800 for C.P. to get back into the studio and complete his CD. This, ladies and gentlemen, is his single that he cut December 15th. It was released December 15th. That was a Saturday night at midnight. This is C.P. Kelly. This is the fellow we want to help. A new way to fly. Like birds on a high line They line up at night time at the bar They all once were lovebirds and bluebirds are all that they are. They landed in L. The minute they fell from love's sky, and now they hope in the wine that they'll find a new. A new way to fly Far away from goodbye Above the clouds and the rain The memories and the pain And the tears that they again They don't seem to mind all the time for the money they see It's a high price to pay to just find a way to get by But it's worth every dime Till they find a new way to fly A new way to fly C.P. Kelly, that's his new single, New Way to Fly. That's a pretty song, don't you think? I think it is.
Ugly, but you shove your way some hell. You might have a good time if you come out of your shell. But you know ain't gonna be. a party going on right here at the Funny Farm. You're listening to the George Espen Lob Show, coming to you live from the Funny Farm. And this is another freaky night at the farm. We just don't know what's happening or going to happen. I'm not even sure we know what happened. Anybody around here know what happened? Hey, hey <laughs> Does anybody care around here what happened? No, I don't think so. <laughs> for you that uh, for you that are listening perhaps for the first time or maybe the second time or or you haven't hung out with us uh, too many times we, we we need to tell you that uh, we're we're just uh, we're just not right around here I mean we think we're all right but you know People in the real world don't think we're right, but we know we're right. But let me let me put it to you this way. We love it when people come to the funny farm. Now, people come from far and wide. People from the real world, that's out there where you're at, at right now, that, that's out there where you live. People from the real world come to the funny farm. Many come here. But few leave. It's not that we hold them hostage or force them to stay here. They just like the atmosphere. And so they just decide to stay. You, you, do you know, I, I, I don't know how many of you really do know, but let, let me fix you up here for a second. Uh, do you know that this place, the funny farm, right here, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm gonna get it for you here. Uh, in 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 uh, uh, <laughs> the let me take this off of here. Yeah, man, if we aren't a mess tonight. Uh, anyhow, that, that's not what. I, no, no, Charlie, I should let you do this stuff because I get I get all discombobulated. But anyway, do you know that? This place right here, the Funny Farm, is a place where fantasy and reality are intertwined. And none of us, none of us here knows the difference. And we just don't care. But this place here at the Funny Farm, we are self-sustained. <laughs> Wait a minute. That just, that made me crack up here for a minute. We here at the Funny Farm are self-sustained. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to me because I'll start laughing and then I'll start coughing 
and won't be able to stop and then then we'll have to go we'll have to go do something else but anyhow we're, we're self-sustained here this staff that takes care of this funny farm is former clients some people call them inmates we call them clients for instance you you might not be aware of it but our chief psychiatrist here at the funny farm is cindy cindy is our chief psychiatrist in the real world at one time cindy was a practicing psychiatrist i mean she had the whole gig you know she had an office a receptionist she had a prescription pad <laughs> she had a prescription pad <laughs> She had, she had a stop it. She had a prescription pad, and she had a uh, she had a couch. <laughs> she had a couch where you know people would come, and and she would sit down with her notepad uh, in her chair while they laid down on her couch, and and you know she would she would do whatever psychiatrists do uh, while they were talking to her. And then, you know, at, at the end of the session, she would get her prescription pad out <laughs> and write them, write them out a prescription. She was a real, full-fledged psychiatrist. Well, she ended up here as an inmate. She did. But... When I came and took over the funny farm, I cleaned house. You know, the, all, all those uh, doctors and cooks and mechanics and, you know, whatever it took to run this place as, with, with a staff, I, I canned them. I sent them down the road. But before I did, I went through all the personnel records of our... <laughs> Of our inmate, <laughs> I went through the whole through the whole smear, and I I found out what what some of these people did in the real world, and so like Cindy, she was a real psychiatrist in the real world at one time. You know, before she went out of bounds, whatever you want to call it, she she uh, <laughs> you know, before before she needed some <clears throat> psych psych psych. <laughs> Before she needed some psychiatric work on herself, you know what I mean, uh, and she ended up here. So I decided that since she, you know, was was schooled and experienced in that field, uh, that I would make her the chief psychiatrist of the Funny Farm. Uh, Marcia Groom, she is one of the head cooks here. In the real world, she was a cook uh, in several different places for some big institutions. And then something happened that sent Marcia over the top or, you know, she walked off the edge or, or something. But she ended up here. And so I looked at the files, and I fired all the cooks from the real world and sent them packing. And I made Marcia and some other people that had experience the head cook here at the funny farm. And so they... They took over doing that. Travis, I fired all the mechanics. I went through the personnel records, and I found that Travis was a, a mechanic on, on things like buses and tractors and, and uh, you know, gizmos and vehicles and this and that. Well, I just fired all the mechanics and stuff, and, and Travis, he was, he was an inmate here for a long time. They wouldn't let him do nothing, so I, I, I just made him the head, <laughs> the head, uh, head mechanic of everything. He he drives the bus. He take he he takes the I mean the clients on on uh, field trips. One of their favorite places to go is stop it. One of the favorite places to go is to the hardware store. That's they go on a field trip down to the hardware store. Now I'm just saying, you know, for the benefit of the people that maybe are listening for the first time tonight. Or you know the second time, or they're not fully aware of what what we are or who we are. Uh, we don't even know that. But anyway, that that's how things work around here. See, 
Well, we're we're self self sustaining. <laughs> we grow our own food. We have our own cows. We have uh, uh, left legged. No, we have short left legged cows. Yeah. So when they stand on the hill, they stand with their left legs on the high part and their long <laughs> their long legs on on the on the right side of the hill. <laughs> So that way they don't tip over. <laughs> now they they sometimes if they get mixed up then they'll they'll, they'll tip over roll down the hill. And, and then they have a, a difficult time. But we have horses. Ask Charlie. Charlie went for a horse ride one day. Some night we'll play that again for you. Uh, we have everything that we need here. We even have a Funny Farm Police Department. Funny Farm emergency uh you know an ems service we have uh uh a full-fledged funny farm hospital uh funny farm doctors uh of course they're doctors that used to be doctors in the real world so we made them, we made them doctors again and then they're they're doing a wonderful job uh when 911 gets a call all of our vehicles be it the police the fire department or the EM, ems you know the ambulances and the rescue trucks and stuff uh, they all drive backwards to uh the scene of the to the scene of the accident or the crime whatever the case might be uh <laughs> they drive backwards and they they have a bad habit of driving backwards uh right past the crime or the accident and so then they have to turn around and come back the other direction, backwards, to, uh, you know, pick up the pieces or the people or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me, whatever's going on. Uh, we, have, we have a uh, Funny Farm marching band and a Funny Farm uh, drum corps. And they march backwards. And they are, they are the coolest. They are the coolest group of people you ever see. You have never seen, never I'll bet never in your entire life out there in the real world have you ever seen a marching band with a drum corps march backwards in unison. I'll bet you've never seen one, have you? Well, we've got it. We've got it. And sometimes, sometimes they come marching right through the Funny Farm Radio Studio while we're on the air. We have, we have to stop, so... You know, somebody opens the door at one end, and they march in backwards, and we open the door at the other end, and they march out going backwards. Uh, so we just wait till they do their thing, and, and that's it. We have our own airport. That's what I said. Many people come, but few leave. Uh-oh. Here comes one now. The land. That flight pattern is right over the top of our, our radio studio, but that's bringing a whole bunch of people here from the real world to our world. And there won't be many people leaves. Sometimes it takes uh, a week or two to get a full airplane load to carry out of here <coughs> because everyone wants to stay. So, I, you know, I've lip-dripped quite a bit. <laughs> I've been long-winded on this, but that's why we tell people we won't be responsible for any side effects that might occur while you listen to the George Espen Love Show. You chose to do it. So we can't be responsible for any side effects. And trust me, I guarantee you that there's going to be some side effects that's going to take place. But you know what? We can't be responsible. That's the way it is. Pushing my way through Never thought about it quite like this But the truth is I'm flying away from you And this time I'm strapped in tight I'll figure it out If it takes the whole flight
dedicated girl like me. Thank our friends down there at musicalley.com. That's musicalley.com because they are the ones that supplies our music around here. If you've noticed lately, and it's been it's been uh, oh my, it's been several months now since we have played any uh, what's the name of it traditional music. You know, music that you hear uh, in the real world on the radio and and uh, on other internet radio stations and so on and so forth. We are playing music by singers and songwriters and groups of people that have not been in the traditional mix. Right? You know, I don't know if I'm making a lick of sense, but, but these are men and women that are really, really playing and jamming and working hard uh, to leave their mark. And there's some real gems. So our friends down there at musicalley.com are really a big help in helping us find these men and women, these groups that are climbing, clawing, digging their way and trying to reach the top. There's some fantastic talent that we've come across. We, uh, we are going to have some guests from the UK here, most Ricky Tick. We are going to have some guests from uh, uh, Northern Ireland, Most Ricky Tick. That Ricky Tick, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard that before. Most Ricky Tick, that means soon. Uh, not right now, but soon. Uh, of course, we had uh, Graham Forster with us from Parma, Italy, on the 21st of December, live. Uh, so we have guests from all walks of life all over the world it is exciting and it's exciting indeed we're gonna take uh and jump on the back of the puppy and run, ride it out the door no offense charlie no offense charlie that that's another thing uh charlie is our announcer he is our uh he is our uh board worker <laughs> the soundboard he works the soundboard i can't even speak right you know it's friday uh I'm burnt. I'm toast. Charlie is a wiener dog. He walks upright. He talks here in our world. When he comes out into the real world, he just acts like a normal dog. You know, walks on all four and, and growls and barks and, you know, does his thing around other people. And uh, that's just the way it is. But in our world, everyone has a voice, including Charlie. From all of us here at the Funny Farm, thank you for tuning in. Charlie, 
Miss Ernestine, Harvey, my mom, Liza Mae Swampbush. Uh, what, what's that Stu Da Beggar lady's name? Uh, Thelma Louise Stu Da Beggar. Travis the mechanic. Cindy the chief psychiatrist. Everybody else. Dorothy the doily maker. All of us here at the Funny Farm. We want to thank you for your support, for your kind words, for your emails, for everything that you've done to make this show possible. We want to make it bigger. We want to make it better. And we can only do that if we have you. Without you, there would be no reason to be on the air Monday through Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time here on the Spreaker Network. We're striving. We're striving to make it bigger and better. We have some tremendous guests that are coming down the road, and they're going to sit in the chair right here at the Funny Farm. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, boys and girls. Tonight, well, that's what some Friday nights turn out to be, just a freaky Friday night at the farm. Hey, we say this every Friday night before we leave, but, you know, one of these days we're going to surprise you. We say this, look for us because we might, we might bounce on the air at any time, Saturday or Sunday, whatever moves us, when it hits us. We might be working on something and say, yeah, let's put that on the air right now. So keep checking. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your in-laws, tell your outlaws, tell everybody to tune into the George Espinlove Show Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We are having a ball, and I hope you are too. If we brought a smile to your face for just a few seconds tonight, then we're happy. If we made you as crazy as the rest of us are around here, we're really happy. You know, that's our goal, to make you smile and to make you just about as crazy as the rest of us. Because we all, we all go through this together, whatever this thing is. Look for us. We might be around Saturday or Sunday, anytime. Tune in and listen to Harry B. Swinging 60s show. He'll be on at... Uh, 4 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time here, 9 o'clock in Northern Ireland tomorrow. So tune in that. Tune in to Godiva Radio. Graham Forster. Type it in up there at the search box thingy on Spreaker.com. Tune in there. Wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, I want you to know there's a whole lot of love coming to you from the Funny Farm. My thanks to Neil. My thanks to C.P. Kelly. Help us put C.P. back into the studio so he can complete his, his CD and fulfill his dream. But we care about you. Email me, georgece at comcast.net. That's georgece at comcast.net. We'll be looking forward to it. And thanks for all the emails that you've already sent us. Keep them coming. We love it. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, if it's tonight, I want you to have a good night. If it's already tomorrow where you are, have a great day. But until Monday or before, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time right here on the Speaker Network, this is George Espinlob saying good night. And I mean this, God bless you real good.